the damn cups I'm trying to get some coffee there are no cups left I told the crew they need to be keeping up on the dishwasher keep cleaning the dishes and they just, they just don't listen to me my friends so we're gonna be drinking coffee straight out of the faucet all right we don't have any no cups so we're, we're, we're getting down there we're getting down there oh we're floating come on come on get, get into coffee all right my friends this is Lucas the Ducas and I am extremely jittery and Gosh darn it. Come on, go back into the screen now. I'm extremely jittery from all the coffee that I've consumed in this grand space vessel. So this ship would be called the Prometheus. It is available on the Steam Workshop. And gosh darn it, if it isn't extremely impressive, my friends. Look look at that beard. Every, every time we do a close-up, I just I have to show you guys this fucking glorious beard. You can see that dazed look on my face. That's because I just... Oh, I saw inside my nose. What, what is it? Inside my face? Oh, that is creepy, my friends. Well, I've drank a lot of coffee, so we're jittery as hell. And we're going to be showing you guys a badass ship available on the workshop. So this thing is actually quite impressive. It has many rooms. It has several mods activated, as you can see by the space coffee machine right over here. And a bunch of fridges to keep my Diet Dr. Pepper cooled in the, the, the desert-type temperatures, which we are exploring. So, my friends, we're going to be checking out this ship. Uh... It's it's goddamn it if it isn't uh, one of the the most intricate ships I've seen in quite a long time. So we're about to check out the outside of it, and uh, yes, show I will see you all in one second. All right, my friends, the Prometheus is a massive beast, as you can see here. Um, one thing that I really like about this this ship is the four um, the four rotating thruster bays we have here that are connected to the main body of the ship. So it's 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 good for some added protection, and it is also good for um, sort of rotating these these giant thruster bays to point them in whichever direction you might want to you might want to face off against. So as they are right now, they're in perfect position to take off from the planet. So this is an interplanetary lander; it can leave the planet, no problem. So the way this works is it it will rotate, and um, if you are up in the air and you want to you know you want your propulsion going forward to be faster than going up. You can rotate with the rotor and actually point the thrusters in the backward position to give yourself a little bit more of uh, forward momentum. If you go down here, you can see the the thrusters that are in use. These are the the Titan engines. So of course there are a bunch of mods taking place in this in this ship, fully fully decked with I think it has at least like 15 mods on it. So the attention to detail in this ship is truly inspiring. So as you can see, we have somewhat of um, makeshift landing gears and definitely some sexy looking landing gears at this point. So we have some pistons to retract and extend them back into the thruster base. So if you want to take off, it's going to be a good idea to extend these piston bays up before you do that. And um, there, gosh darn it, if there isn't a lot to go into in this ship. Um, another point I like about this ship is the very, very nice color design. So it would look really good all gray, but this is really a good... A really good indication of uh, how a color scheme can sort of change a ship for the better. 
Um, it would look really good as gray, but I think the yellow and the black design really make the whole ship pop out quite a bit more and make it quite a bit more unique than if it was, you know, more than more unique than it already is. It's like one of the most unique ships on the workshop at the moment. And the, the color design really takes it to that next level. So this is a very, very large ship. Rolling around in spectator mode, it's sort of had hard to understand the scale of this monstrosity. So I'm going to pop my... Oh, here I am. So as you can see, this is my little small suit man. Little small space man. And as you can see, this thing is just fucking massive. Intense size on this thing. So as you can imagine, there are many rooms in this thing. I'm thinking around like 15 to 20 rooms. There's a kitchen. There's, you know, bathrooms. There's bunking quarters. There's a... Uh, more than one seat, uh, more than one console block, so you can, you know, more person than one can pilot this thing at once. One person could be maybe manning a turret that you might want to put on here, another person could be checking out, um, you know, your your reactor fuel or something along those lines, some role-playing scenarios. So you can see we got a refinery sticking out here. Very, very impressive design. Very good use of the rotors, so using the rotors to... Um, to point these antennas in different directions. Obviously, the antennas is just give yourself a little bit more, a um, little bit more role playing involved. Obviously, your antennas don't need to be pointed in any which direction to work. But these thrusters with the rotors is actually a brilliant idea. So you can rotate these things with whatever, whatever direction you needed to take off. So we're gonna go to the front door of this thing. Gosh darn! If it takes me a long time to find the doors of these vessels, here we are, right here. So we're going to fly into the door at lightning speeds. So yes, uh, a huge, a very, very vast uh, amount of mods included in this thing. We're going to jump into our... Oh, we're not quick loading. Jump into our suit. So, as you can see, um, we have some, some Christmas trees in here. Well, some trees with some snow, so some nice scenic. Um, sort of give yourself an idea. If you're in space for a long time and you know, all you're looking out to is just vast, empty, the blackness of space. Right here, you can see, you know, just sort of some environment. Give your, you know, spruce up the inside of this place a little bit. And here's something I've been seeing a lot more lately, which is the the tires being used inside ships as sort of like a decoration. So um, when you have vanilla ships, it, it, it really, you need to sort of take some liberties to, um, to sort of spruce up the place uh, and sort of make your own design. So there's somewhat of a a rubber pillar of tires, sort of structural stability, and maybe a punching bag if you, my space engineer wanted to bang his head against this thing. And yes, as you can see, we have a kitchen. So, you know, we, we have many kitchens in this place, actually. So, you know, whoever your your head your head chef is can be hard at work. That would be Bear in our survival scenario. So he's going to be making maybe some salmon, something he caught in the wilderness. So yeah, let's keep on going. Move on to the next room. As you guys can see... The FPS isn't the best. It isn't. It isn't at the top of its game right now, but um, it is to be expected with a a ship of this size. So as you can see, just the the interior um, the interior structure design looks really nice. So sort of like an angle design coming up here, um, straight up right here, and then sort of angled to the top. So it gives it a nice contrast. Uh, very nice interior structure. And there's a lot of these maps of the Prometheus. So. Really cool that he went through all the trouble to actually make a map of this thing. The Wayland Corporation. So as you can see, one is the, the escape pods, and then the hangar bay, and then the crew housing, the storage, and gym. So yes, my friends, this thing does have a gym. And the hibernation pods, the kitchens, the bridge, the cockpit, and the ejection pods. So the vicar pod and the ejection pods must be two separate things. Alright, let's take a right right here, go down these long series of hallways. So the inner... The inner structure of this thing is quite advanced. And he went through the, the trouble of, you know, coloring out most of it too. So the color scheme in this thing is is pretty top notch at the moment. And as you can see in here, we go inside and we have uh, your own little TV and a little private crew quarters. You know, a little seat right here is right here as well. And what looks like to be a vent of some kind. So yeah, just an incredible amount of detail to just fully pressurize a a single room like that and put its own vent in there and its own actually a vent system so it's actually inside the ceiling and stuff right here we have a another bunk room along with a little bit of a picture you know give yourself a little bit more of a home-like feel 
And here's the last crew quarters right here. Has a programmable block, so this might be a little bit more of a special room. You know, maybe the captain's quarters. Or maybe not, maybe the first lieutenant, the captain's quarters is going to have to be a little bit more impressive than that. So we go down here, and we have another another lore-friendly sort of role-playing scenario. This is where we started the intro of the of the video. So we have a coffee room, a kitchen, and some tables, so uh, all your different... Can we sit down here? Oh, we cannot sit down. That's unfortunate, but... So a bunch of your people can, you know, get some coffee, maybe, you know, sort of congregate while you're having your breakfast, waiting for your, your daily tasks to be provided by your captain or your commander. So yes, a vent right here. This place is fully pressurized. Another compartment of rooms right here. You have a sort of a, a raised catwalk area. Maybe your captain or one of your first lieutenants could walk around here and um, maybe go off a checklist when you're uh, sort of releasing everybody from their cryogenic sleep. So yes, a bunch of cryogenic chambers, some, some small reactors. This would not be the reactor room, but there are reactors and batteries and some various things just sprinkled across the ship. Okay, so this thing sort of has somewhat of a space type design, so you're going to need some hydro in order to get up these giant shafts that get you from one floor to the other. Right here we have a beautiful view to look upon this really cool looking planet. So this is a modded planet. I'll leave the link in the description. Um, it's sort of an Earth-like planet, but there's something about the skybox that's a little different, I believe. And it's, um, it's a lot more mountain-like, a lot more like wide mountain ranges and stuff. So yeah, very cool planet. Very nice. So right to the right of the main kitchen area, we go down here to the storage area and the gym, the airlock, hangar bay, the loading ramp, all that good stuff. A couple of series of stairways going down here. So very cool utilization of the windows and the sort of uh, separation between, between the ship here so you can sort of look onto the other stairway from this stairway. Just sort of gives you an idea of the scale of the ship. We have the conveyor ports going up here. I'm not sure what these conveyor ports are going to. They look to be stopping right here. Do they go down anything on the bottom? Maybe they're just for decoration at this point. So, as you can see right here, we were talking about uh, where the reactors are located, and this would be them. A long series of large reactors. Looks like we got about four, yeah, about four large reactors right here. They're all conveyed. It's a very good looking ship, but it is also conveyed to make it very practical to use in a survival type scenario. As you can see, we have an oxygen farm right here. Maybe another room going into a separate little column over there. We come up here, and we arrive at the the bowels of the ship. So, um, he's left he's left some consideration in here to to actually come inside the bowels of your ships, maybe do a little bit of repair. So it's um, it's not as hard to get to it. So in other circumstances, you might have to actually just grind through a good portion of your ship to get to stuff like this. But now it's just. It's all ready for you to go here. Um, I'm not sure how this works, so he might have damage turned off on the blocks. Because you would think if you, you know, upward propulsion would just, like, burn through these these blocks here. Which, in all honesty, they probably will. So, as you can see, we've got a bunch of large reactors and uh, some various things in here. Along with uh, some grinders. I don't... I'm not 100% sure why he put grinders in here. Maybe welders would have made sense. Maybe if you need to split the ship in half for some unknown reason and maybe save half the ship and leave the other half behind. I'm not 100% sure, but the, the inner bowels of the ship is quite extensive down here. So we can see a, bu a bunch of atmospheric thrusters, a bunch of regular ion thrusters. Yeah, the, the inside of the ship, like the completely inside the bowels of the ship, um, is really huge. A lot of area down here. So you could decide to further extend some stuff down here maybe if you wanted to, maybe make some... Make some more rooms, further flesh out the inside of this thing. Really doesn't need much of any um, work done to it. It's pretty much a complete ship at this point, but still cool to see a little room for improvement if you may want to do that. <laughs> I'm like totally in the bowels of the ship right now, just lost. All right, so instead of going into the reactor room right here, we're gonna go down this little passageway right here. Hopefully get to the, the loading bay if I am correct. 
All right, so down here would be another another control area that leads you into the main cargo access, which would be right down here, this long, very vast hallway. Another another viewpoint to look outside and check out your general area. Very beautiful. You can also close these up too, so there's somewhat of an uh, armored shutter. Um, you could use hangar doors to do this, or you could just use the regular doors like this creator decided to do. Very cool. So this is an exploration vessel, my friend. So it is not just to look pretty. It also has all the needed commodities like refineries, assemblers, and large cargo containers. So here would be your large cargo containers, all conveyed, all for ease of access for all you sexy space engineers out there. And this would also be somewhat of a basketball court. So if you guys want to play some basketball, here you go. See, so yeah, I probably went through this area probably like three or four times. I didn't realize that these were... These were basketball hoops. So I don't know what you could use. Maybe use a piece of stone. Just drop drop some stone on the ground and do a couple shoots. Shoot some hoops in here. Yeah. So this might be the gym. I'm not sure if there's more of a gym than this. That would definitely qualify as a gym, sort of, I guess. So, yes. Uh, God, these... He is very... He's taking into account all the all the different signs to show you where you need to go. Because in a ship of this scale, it's it's easy to get lost. It's very easy. All right, now we're going to go to the hangar airlock and the loading ramp. Let's see, warning, what does that say? Warning, hangar not pressurized when loading ramp extended. That is good to know. So here's where a majority of your work might go down. Right at the hangar, the hangar entrance to your ship. So as you can see, we have, a, we have a rover right here. And we have some connectors and some stuff that would make it a lot easier for you to build some various ships down here let's let's fly this thing well let's drive this thing handbrake no so we're getting in this thing we're trying to explore the rest of the hangar oh just barely made that just barely oh come on luke turn that bitch So yes, an incredible attention to detail in this ship. Incredible. Hopefully we can stop in time. Come on, slow down. Slow down. Oh, look at my flopping legs. Okay, here we are at the glorious hangar. Very crisp design right here. Bunch of spotlights. Give yourself a good idea of what you're doing down here without lights. Honestly, I, do I have lights on? I don't even know. I don't even know if I have my light on. <laughs> So the way this works is actually quite interesting. So we're off the ground at the moment here. Let's let's go to spectator mode so we can check this out. Well, let's not do that. So as you can see, we are hovering off the ground a little bit. So if we were to open up the hangar now, um, it would be impossible to get rovers in here. So that's why it needs to extend downward. So it's actually a pretty nice hangar. So it's a lot different from your regular hangar where it's just you know, just the hangar door is opening and that's about it. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to do the loading dock control and you're going to want to press down. So once you press down, we have the the first step in opening up the hangar, which would be these the actual hangar doors right here um, getting out of your way so the other blocks can can go down, can descend. So then we go to the ramp control. It's all it's all coordinated for you. So you go to the left here, and then you press down once again. Give it just one second. There's there's a couple different things that need to, a couple different processes that need to kick on. So yes, a very impressive loading door design. This comes right down, smooth as hell. I mean, whoever made this ship, and, you know, of course, it's going to be linked in the description, and uh, I have the utmost respect for you, because this is, I mean, if there were Space Engineers Awards for ships, I this one would definitely be nominated, because it is so, gosh darn, efficient, sexy, I mean, the world he chose to put it on, the modded world, I mean, everything is just, I wouldn't change a single thing about it, is basically what I'm saying, so, so much, incredible incredible talent this artist has and I, I honestly I'm their artists you guys you know you, you could call them 
mod creators or modders or something but these in this game these guys are fucking artists so for for the process of seeing this all work again so you're gonna have to do it in the reverse order this time everybody so you can just want to press up make sure not to do it in the other way because if you do that there's there's going to be some collisions of some kind and it's not going to function the way it was designed to so this thing just raises on up nice and then after it raises up um, these these hangar doors snap into place so there aren't any breaches for some pesky players to be jumping up in here <laughs> so the hangers they should pop open pop closed any second now so yes that would do it for the hangar a lot of room to work with in this place and you also have this rover so you can just we should have showed us ourselves flying out of this thing with that rover that would have been cool but we missed it we missed an opportunity once again so now for our final step we're gonna take this thing off I'm gonna show you guys how to fly or at least how I have had success flying it so I'll see you guys in one second I don't know why why we're going up here so there are a couple different cockpits you can choose from um, there's there's a couple in here there's a couple other on the in just sort of some like prime locations with some windows so there are definitely a couple more places to use as a bridge but this would be the main one right here it's all fully um, it's fully marked and displayed on the little LCD panels so yes this would be the main the main room where your captain would be spending a lot of his time shutters on both sides because as you guys can understand um, oh we got feet in our face what are you doing so yeah as you guys can imagine um, taking this thing you know such an advanced craft into into space into a trade route of some kind or any exploration adventure you're gonna want to keep keep yourself protected so you close up all these things before you actually wanna fly this thing out here in case one of these windows which are a little bit less a little bit less uh, supply a little bit less protection you're gonna want to cover those up in case they explode because if there's an earthquake you guys you know the first thing you want to do is you want to get away from all the windows so glass isn't breaking and flying in your face and on that same note, if there's an alien attack of some kind, you you know, you don't want glass flying. Your <laughs> Which brings me to this thing, glass flying all over your face. What are you talking about, Luke? I don't know, you guys. You know, It's bulletproof glass, so maybe it's more stable than your usual glass. All right, everybody. So what you're going to do first is you're going to want to you're going to want to press eight and turn on all those internal thrusters, which I showed just, you know, just scattered within the inside of the ship. So press 8, turn those on, makes it a little bit lighter. Um, second thing you want to do is you're just you're going to want to look through your hotbar. There's a couple different things you can use here. So some of it is for the, the lower hangar entrance. Some of it is different cameras you can use. So uh, yeah, definitely check those out. Um, and to, to start your, your start your initial lift off, what we're going to want to do is start the Titan engine. So this thing handles mostly like a helicopter. WASD is not really going to come into account much at all. So yeah, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take off. At first, we're going to want to be a little fast, maybe 73 millinewtons, but um, we're going to want to gradually let off on it. So there we are. We can see our altitude over there, 90 meters. And let's slow it down just a little bit, maybe to 61, the actual cockpit. So as you can see, they have these light up um, display signs right here. They're all animated. It says landing mode activated. And once we actually bring ourselves to fly mode, they will be, it will say um, flying mode activated. So basically what we got to do now is retract the landing gears, which would be a press of the button nine. And so uh, definitely don't do that look outside and see that they're actually coming up this might take a second it takes about about six or seven seconds to actually fully retract next thing you're going to want to do is point the ship upward because obviously our our you know our propulsion is going to be switched 
So next thing we do is we press 5 to start the rotation. As you can see, the, the signs up here have changed. So the is flight mode activated. So point it, you, you want to be pretty high, highly elevated. And let's press V. There are cameras so you can see this happening. And then you're going to want to lock both and 7. Get these fully locked in place. And then you want to keep your, keep your elevation up like this. As we said. Maybe increase the speed a little bit. We will start gaining altitude any second now. Maybe just increase the speed a tiny bit more. There we are. It is a lot of weight, so as you can see, it stalled right there a little bit. So we have taken off, my friends. Such a beautiful ship. So it, it handles similar to a to a helicopter, so you have to sort of um, keep on key with its pitch in order to slow down and stop. And obviously, if you want the flight mode to go back down to um, to landing mode, you're gonna have to slow down a lot because you can't be going to landing mode at 200 meters per second. I mean, you can. You sort of have to do a mix between it between the flight mode and landing mode. So, the farther up you get here, you can start like leveling it out a little bit in case you just want to if you want to leave the planet, obviously you want to keep it straight up, but you start leveling it out a little bit and just turn into a glorious eagle. Look at this thing. She is sexy as hell. Huge Titan. The only thing I wish I could zoom out more, but the ship is so big that this is literally the farthest I can zoom backwards. Well, that's a cool shot, though. Why not? Very, very cool. So, we're going to level it out. I hear some banging. Banging around going on. I don't think anything's been damaged. Maybe it has. Maybe something small, but... I definitely heard something banging. Oh! There's part back there. Huh. Alright, let's 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 fully appreciate this thing and before it completely falls apart, what's happening? So I may have damaged I don't know how I damaged something, but uh, it happened. You have to be really careful with um so when you wanna move, you wanna rotate, because as you're in flight, you have to be careful with uh with locking the the thruster bays, the rotating thruster bays, because if you lock it and you try to um, rotate it, maybe something I did that and something ended up going wrong. Okay, let's see. We're gonna want to slow ourselves down. Coming for a landing. As I said, you gotta handle it like a helicopter. Turn the thrusters all the way up. And then let's lock them into place. All right, everybody, I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for taking part in this channel. And I'd also like to thank the creator of this ship, Avrock, for building such a magnificent piece of machinery. So once again, my friends, if you enjoyed this video, please go out and support yourself, some space engineers, and support the creator of this ship, Avrock. And I say that during pretty much every episode where I showcase the ship, but I would honestly... Love it if you guys just went out there and supported Avrock on either his YouTube channel or just leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, just saying amazing work dude or, you know, something along those lines to his workshop page. So once again, you guys, like, thank you for watching. I'd like to thank you for being such glorious and sexy space engineers. And once again, my friends, this is Luke the Duke, and good night and good luck.